Welcome to a special lowrider edition of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, I first became aware of this phenomenon, oh, maybe about 20 years ago. I went to a car show. I go to all the car shows, and there was one in the valley called The Blessing of the Cars. And I went down there, and it was mostly lowriders and all kinds of cool food and neat music, and it was just a kind of a low-key affair, a lot of kids, a lot of families, and everybody was having a lot of fun. And I, I was really impressed at the cars that I had seen, so I've been keeping my eye on it, and we've got two fantastic cars here today. And we're going to show you a level of detail and workmanship on these cars are as good as anything we've ever had in the garage. And I'm talking guys like Lamborghini and Ferrari. There's some brilliant engineering on these cars, some brilliant detail, and some of the best paintwork I've seen in any car, regardless of cost. Uh, let's meet the editor of Lowrider Magazine, Joe Ray. Joe, come on in here, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing all right, Jay. Hey, Thank thanks you. for bringing these cars by. This is very cool. Thank you very much for inviting us here. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about the whole Lowrider thing, because it really started about, what, 15 miles from here, didn't it? Right here in Southern California, in L.A. Well, the, the car custom capital of the world right. is Los Angeles. From Boyle Heights, floated over to East L.A. and, and kind of just took off from there. Yeah, because originally... It was mostly Hispanic kind of thing early on? Yes. I, I mean, you know, everybody's characteristics or the artistry which Hispanics have. I right. mean, just went with a car and they came from the lead sled area. Right, maybe. right. You know, the uh, custom car era too. And, you know, there's no limits in some of these cars that you can, as you can see here. And we'll show you the hydraulics later, which is fantastic. It's just amazing what these cars can do. You know, it's a different way of looking at the car hobby. Some guys like to build dragsters. Some guys like to just build cars that run top end. Some guys like to build cars that just cruise. Uh, with the low-rider phenomenon, you get a little bit of all of that. Uh, some of these cars are amazingly powerful. When you see what's under the hood of this uh, 63 Chevy here, you'll be, you'll be very impressed. So it's a nice mixture of hot rod and, and low-rider and some real design engineering in this car as well. I'm going to show you some features in it in a little bit. But tell us more about uh, the whole low riding phenomenon. It's sort of spreading around the world now, isn't it? It's all over. The, it's in almost in every country, Jay. Yeah. Um, even in the magazine, we featured cars from all over the world, a special feature, maybe nine cars. It's the, the biggest uh, automotive cultural industry yeah. there is today. Because I know some countries, like Germany, you can't modify a car. Yeah, you have the tiny wheel in the car. You cannot have that here. You go to jail, you put the tiny wheel in the car. So, right. But see, here in, Amer here in America, you can do whatever you want. Right. But it must be interesting in other countries where laws won't allow them to do a lot of these things, isn't it? The heart and soul, Jay, of, of low riding, if you will notice, I'm sure, is the, the small tires and, and the wire wheels. And back in the early 60s and 70s, um, all the prototype cars made out of clay had the wire wheel and they had the white wall on that. Mm -hmm. The reason for that, that tire, and it gives you a classic look like the Jaguar and the MG. And the reason for that tire right there is um, the smaller the tire size, the more it'll get you that car down on the ground, right. lower look, which brings out these um, best style GM cars, brings out the style, they look longer, leaner, meaner. Yeah. See. When I was a kid in my neighborhood, you just assume, hey, there's a body in the trunk, you know? <laughs> why is the car on the ground? What happened? Hey, what's going on? But no, that's, uh, obviously that's the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the lower look, you know, it was fun back then with the uh, lead sleds and some of the customs. If you took a parking block from a parking lot and put it in the back or some cement bags, whatever got that car down lower, they just right. looked a lot meaner. Yeah. Just like your chop tops make that look. So right, right. somebody started, and, and there's different stories of Ron Aguirre and his Corvette was the first one. And there's, of course, Bill Hines, who invented a lot of different types of suspensions. And um, they came out with the hydraulics. And the hydraulics are cool. I mean, you see like 5% of, of lowriders a day are hopping. Right. They got these tens of 20s of uh, batteries and they're trunk with multiple pumps and all that. But the, the rest, the other 95%, they really want that nice ride, not that bumpy ride, because it gets tiresome sometimes, yeah. And, yeah, you yeah. know, on a weekend, just bouncing around and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And now there's airbags, and, you know, and, and people, there's really no difference. They leak air. Sometimes these things leak right. oil. But whatever gets you down on the ground. Right. And the same thing going back to the wheels. You know, all we're trying to show here as lowriders is just show 
wheel is what we want to show. That's why the white wall's there in a the little tire. Right. And today you see the, the bigger wheel cars, what they're trying to do in the smaller tires. They're just trying to show rims. So in a lot of, a lot of ways today, the style of the lowrider going back 50, 60 years ago is uh, mainstream through a lot of different types of vehicles today. Well, the thing that impresses me, because a lot of people think, oh, they just took a car and they put a little tire on it, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of engineering and design work in getting these hydraulics to work. I mean, you have to be really good at what you do. You have to be literally an engineer or at least an expert mechanic to do it properly. Let's, uh, let's meet the owner of this car. Chris, where's he at? Chris is right here. Chris. Chris, come on in and show us your car. Joe, thanks. You're welcome, Jay. Thank you. Chris, nice job. Thank you, Jay. I must say, yours is a little more subdued. I like the, uh, I don't know if you can see in this video, the deep gloss of this paint. It's just, a, and, and black is the hardest color. Oh, yeah. You oh, man. Keep it clean well, all I mean, the time. When you look down this thing, you don't see a ripple. You don't see any orange peel. I mean, that's as hard to do as a lot of almost pinstriping and detail work sometimes. Yeah, constantly it? wiping and waxing and <laughs> yeah. pull it out and you're waxing it again. So we got here a 66 Chevy, yeah. Fastback. Oh, yeah. Uh, what kind of shape was it in when you got it? Uh, it was pretty much one of those cars sitting out in the field that you drive by on the freeway and see. Yeah. It was a, uh, need a full restoration, no rust though. Right. Everything was good, so. Now this car obviously did not come with a sunroof. I don't think it was available. No, no, no these yeah. are, this is the biggest sunroof you get, a 44 inch. Came right. on old Lincolns. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> Nicely done. Thanks. Nicely done, beautiful chrome work, beautiful yeah. detail work. You kept the stock seats, correct? Yeah, interior is pretty much all stock. I went okay. with the Dakota Digital Dash. I did it tilt steering column. Yeah. A Billy Specialty steering wheel. I got the CFR chrome pedals, but the uh, it's a stock interior kit, stock, stock now, blue carpet. Tell me why you chose black, because I, I see so many lowriders have such incredible detail on the outside, like this one, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, what made you pick just black? Did you take some of your buddies give you some heat for it? Oh, like, oh, what are you doing? come on! Uh, uh, black's just beautiful color. If it's well, done yeah. right, it just stands out. Yeah, you know. And uh, I wanted to keep the car clean and simple. And just Nicely. So let's see. Is, I'm trying to think what's been modified on the car. Is it is the bodywork? You know, it's it's so nicely done. I can't tell. Yeah, the '66. I like the nice sleek body. So mm -hmm. what I did, which you don't really notice, I shaved the wipers. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay, it took me a minute. You know, it's funny, if you don't see it, you know it's done right. Yes. You know, when something yeah. sticks out, you go, oh, what's that? But see, I didn't even realize that. Nicely done. And the other touch I did, hopefully the cops don't notice, is uh, shave the mirrors. Shave the mirrors. <laughs> well, the cops won't notice that now. Because the odds of the cops watching this yeah. and seeing this no mirrors is almost zero. That's a little tricky uh, that, going without the mirrors. Oh, yeah, it is, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> they get out the way. Yeah, well, can you open the hood? Let's yeah, I'll open the hood. Nicely done. So yeah, pretty much stock under the hood. Nice and clean. I love those uh, stainless steel headers. They give a nice golden glow. There. Yeah, that was one of the nice touches I like with Speedway Motors. Yeah, around. yeah. Well, you can tell it's tuned right when they're when they're all uniform color. Oh yeah, yeah. I went for the clean, simple route. Shiny chrome. I wanted to kept the wheel wells uh, black. Everybody likes chrome them, but how long did it take you to do this car? I believe it or not, this car was a two less than two months frame off. Less than two months yeah. frame off. You have a job? <laughs> yeah, I do, but working around. <laughs> wow. Working. wow. A lot of help from my brother. And, uh, well, that's pretty. Hey, well, send your brother over here. I got projects I got been working on for eight yeah. months and nothing's going on. We can on. knock them out for you. <laughs> yeah, well, nicely done. Nicely done. And of course, beautiful chrome as well. Yeah, I got a uh, CFR pulleys, CFR uh, radiator. They went with the Elderbrock intake, Dershine intake, and carburetor. Very nice. Very nice. Very cool. Well, Chris, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, now let's meet a car I think that typifies the whole lowrider movement. It's a convertible, it's a 63 Chevy, and this is the owner, Brendan. How are you? How you nice doing, to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, I got to tell you, this is a complex and as beautiful a paint job as I've ever seen done anywhere. <laughs> pretty unbelievable. Tell us about what you started with here. Was it pretty rough? It was a driver. Yeah. It was, um, I, I bought it in 1990. I've had it for a long time and I would do it and redo it. And, okay. and you know, always people raising the bar. So you always want to go to that next right, level. Right. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, now you really competitive guy. When you get it done, you go somewhere, you go, uh Oh, man, that guy's got this. I got to top that. It feels good to win. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> you, yeah, you said it all. You said it all. Um, well, just let, let's start with the obvious, the paintwork, is unbelievable and I know 
from the little bit of pinstriping we've done on cars here, we bring a professional pinstriper in, it's hours, sometimes days. I can't imagine. How long does a paint job like this take to do? This, it took me about almost five years okay. just waiting. And a guy named Danny D out of Baldwin Park painted it. And Walt Prey, who was a famous pinstriper and painter from the 60s and 70s, and he's uh, recently passed away, but he did a lot of the striping on it. And he was legendary in the low riding sure. world for uh, pinstriping. And look at this gold flake in here. I mean, not only is it nice, it's, it's so consistent. I mean, it's just amazing how it doesn't waver from here to, because we've tried, we tried to do this and we screw it up. But this is amazing to me how, because usually you see a wave or a pattern within this gold. And it's just, it's just unbelievable. It's all laid out by hand, yeah. with tape and by eye. And these, these guys that, that, that paint these cars are just, they're artists. We they have an eye for the color of which yeah. color to put where. And we had a guy who did uh, some paint striping for us, and he would come in with a bottle of whiskey and a paintbrush. He'd take a swig and go like this and do it <laughs> all the way down. Yeah. A unbelievable. And then he'd stop, take another swig, and then after about 10 swigs, he'd fall down. But it, it was amazing. <laughs> Never a waver. I mean, try and draw a straight line like this. Even on a piece of paper, you can't do it. It's unbelievable. And obviously you've, you've kept, you haven't altered the car physically in any way, right? It's all 63 Chevy. It's all 63 Chevy. We, we shaved the, uh, the vents here and oh, the wiper okay. blades. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to give it a cleaner look. Right. Shave the, the, the foster okay. and the speaker grill and then the gas door on the other side, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Right. Stock windshield. Stock windshield. Okay. All right, let's take a look under the hood of this car and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is not only a low rider, but a pretty powerful car as well because it's not just a 63 Chevy this is a 409 63 Chevy and when you're my age the numbers 409 have a whole kind of magical meaning to them oh can we open the hood sure okay now this is a classic case as I said of, of hot riding meeting low rider this has this is a hot rider's dream that's the classic 409 engine which, of course, has the greatest valve covers in history. I always love those valve covers, that and the 348. Tell us about this injection system. That's really trick. So this, in, this fuel injection is an Algon, which was an Albert Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and he was a World War II aircraft uh, mechanic, and when he got out of the war, he started applying some of that technologies to the drag cars. And, in fact, they did an article on him a few years back. They would use, in the early 60s, they would use a... Uh, a, a surplus fuel pump from the airplanes. Right. So what happens is, you know, you'd have your little squirt bottle and you'd squirt it with fuel to right. start it. Right. And then once you, it's a variable volume pump, so once you open up the butterflies, it basically runs away with itself. That's why they said it was idle or wide open throttle. Right, right. And at the end of the drag strip, they would just shut it off. They'd have to tow it, yeah. tow it away. But now there's ways of controlling the fuel, which I sent it to Kinsler out of Michigan and they made all the bypass valves. There's a main bypass, a secondary, and a high speed. Yeah. But it's, it's still a crude fuel injection. It's considered constant flow. Right, right. But there's... And obviously the air was much cleaner in 1963, <laughs> wasn't it? Just, yeah, you can catch birds in that thing. We've used Kinsler before for our uh, injection for our Maserati. Well, obviously, this is a street car. It's got plates on it. And look how clean, clean the engine compartment is here. Now these, you've chromed this area here. The, the radiators as billet tanks. Right. And then the fans are all chrome plated. And I had to have this custom made with these, in, uh, these returns because there's no thermostat on here. So it just comes right off the head. See, now most guys, including me, would just eh, cut a piece of black hose and stick it on here. I like the fact that you've found yellow. Where do you get yellow hose? Believe it or not, this comes off the, uh, the turbo for the intercooler turbo for the import cars. Oh, okay. So I found that online. Oh, and nicely done. Search for that. I mean, uh, you could look under this hood for hours. The attention to detail is just unbelievable. Even under the hood here is beautifully painted and detailed. Look at the pinstriping on the inner, on the fender well here. Just, just amazing. Well, let's close the hood now. We'll take a look at the uh, driver's compartment. We modified the oh, original yes. grill. Yeah. So it would normally you'd have the, the four eyebrows here, which the exposed right. headlights, and we backed them up and made a phantom grill out of it. Now these don't, this doesn't open. These no. Are, you're right, okay. So it's just back, 
sucked back. And this here is not. Uh... The, these originally are rubber. Oh, right. and, and yeah. And there's a guy in, in our, our club in Lifestyle that, that makes yeah. these out of billet to replace the rubber. Let's take a look at the interior. I really like the interior of this car. It looks like something if you went down to the Pasadena Art Center where all the, all the famous car designers go to school. This looks like an interior they would do. I especially like this floating bridge console here. Let's, Thank you. Uh, ex explain the origin of that, that whole console, the way, it, uh, was that your idea? Well, that's an idea that we, that I, I saw on a hot rod, actually it was a 62 Bel Air bubble top. Okay. And they did uh, something similar to that. And we, we take, get a lot of our ideas on the interiors from the, the hot rod car, car culture. And so we, we, on the outside, we'll go with the candies and the pearls, sure. and then a hot rod interior, and then a powerful engine, and four-wheel disc brakes. So it's a, kind of a hybrid yeah. of what well, most people consider well, low riding. Well, I see more and more blending of hot rod and low riding. You know, like you say, the old guys, would, oh, they'd just be a 283 Chevy with a two-barrel, mm -hmm. and it'd go down the road, putt, putt, putt. You know. Now you've got a 409. What are, you, what are you getting, about 460 horse out of there? Yes, actually, yeah. yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's, it seems like. A car with a four-speed transmission. Mm -hmm. And then, boy, this is as nice an interior as I've ever seen. It looks like almost something that a factory would do. A nice blend of the orange and the yellows. Not overdone. Really cool. And is that a, tell me about the dashboard. Is it digital? So the dash is a digital dash okay. and uh, digital tack as well. And then uh, shaved off all the, uh, the original knobs and just put a billet panel right there and chrome plated it. So we go more with the, uh, like the soft cream right. so it doesn't, the interior doesn't, be too, doesn't get too loud with the paint. No, it kind of softens yeah, it a little yeah. bit. Now something that I thought was funny, I said, how come there's no cover over here? But that's, that's part of the whole deal. Well, some people do, but mostly I wanted to show off the chrome right. convertible rack and then the yellow gotcha. top that I had that yellow top made to. All guys like to show off a nice rack. Yeah. <laughs> got the twin antenna. You got to have the twin antenna. Got to have dual antennas. Got to have the dual antennas. Nicely done. Now, here's another one of those touches that would get lost if somebody else is doing the car. Normally, red taillights would look fine, but you've found orange taillights just to kind of offset, just a nice match there. Uh, where, where, where did you even get those? Where did those come from? I actually found those online, yeah. and those are original, correct, 63 taillights for Australia, because in Australia, they used amber. Okay. Oh, cool. So I, I saw those, and I, they matched the paint, so it was just a little, just a little touch. So if you go driving past any Australians, I oh, might got low right there. <laughs> <laughs> they have low riders in Australia also. <laughs> Nicely done. But they low ride on the other side. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. And of course, look at that. Just, God. I mean, talk about how many angels can you get on the head of a pin. Look at the detail here. Nicely done. Oh, is this the, the, where the artist signed it? Yes, that's, uh, that was Walt Prey. Okay. And this was Danny D. And he's no longer with us, correct? No, he's no longer with us. So that's sort of a tribute thing for him. That's very nicely done. Uh, actually, these paint jobs, they, they, they really came off the, the old dragsters and, right. and the race boats. A lot of these colors of butterscotch, the magenta, yeah. and we took those style paint jobs and put them on the, the lowriders. Now, let's open the trunk and show, us, show them the hydraulics here. I want to show you some real clever, out-of-the-box engineering thinking. This is really nicely done. Take a look. Good day, Mr. Bond. Dana, Dana. Tell us what we have here. I have four hydraulic pumps, one for each wheel. These, uh, the whole hydraulic system is aircraft from the late 50s, early 60s. These motors are Emco, which is electrical engineering manufacturing company out of Los Angeles. They went out of business in the early 60s, and those motors were used on the F-86 plane from the Korean War. The reason I like them is because it has a square motor, the, the field, which you never see, and then it comes back into this bell design with the fan in the back. And it runs four piston pumps, which is a New York air brake. They're still in business today. But everything's off of an airplane. These are hydro air made here in Burbank and Republic zigzag slowdowns, sight glasses. Even the, uh, the tank is an oxygen tank from a you know, thin wall steel from, from the airplane. And we put all the AN fittings. So everything is period correct. Yeah, and I love the fact that you've uh, all the, uh, the tags on all the pumps have been nicely detailed and cleaned up. And of course, more beautiful artwork here. I mean, just the engineering of this is just on, most people would be happy just to get it to work. 
but to make it beautiful and work, that's that's really really impressive. And of course, you got your speakers back there. Can I shut this? Yeah. Okay. Well, that gives you some idea what it's like on the outside. Let's uh, let's take it next door, put it up on the lift, and I'll show you. It's it's just as incredible underneath. Come on. All right, there we go. All right, let's take a look at the attention to the detail under here. This is you must have your wife out here all day polishing this thing. <laughs> it takes uh, it takes a few days to get everything ready to yeah. uh, to go to a show to to get underneath. And yeah. All the but the cool thing is, it's a street car and you drive it. Yep. This brakes, of course. And the rear end is out of a Lincoln Versailles. All right. We use a lot of those, the 77 to 79, because yep. it's two inches narrower. Okay. And then it allows the uh, the reverse wheels to clear the skirts. And then the sway bar comes off of the 75 Monte Carlo. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for looks. And you got your exhaust exiting out the side. The exhaust. It's all chrome plated, Flowmasters. Boy, this is nicely done. Look at, look how beautiful this is under here. I mean, it's really unbelievable. I mean, every bolt, even, you know, you, you put a socket wrench on something, you tighten it, you're going to take a little bit of chrome off. No, nothing. I bought all stainless body mounts and all the bolts yeah. underneath stainless and then I polish them. Yeah. Now, the engine block itself, is it it's stock 409? It's, it's, it's a 63 409 engine. I mean, you didn't do different cams or pistons or anything. Well, it's, just... it's 11 to 1. Oh, it is 11 it's to 11 1. It's 11 to okay. 1, which is actually factory. And it has a Iski Z55 cam, which is okay. like 590 lift, 608 duration. But it runs off 100 octane, right? Which is that street blaze fuel, right? 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 Well, just, just great. As you can see, not only is it a show car, it's a safe car. Everything's been done properly. Nothing looks kind of. I mean, just unbelievable. Everything is all proper. A lot of times you look under show cars and this, you know, things are safety wired and they're not, you know, whatever. They're not. Uh, they're not done to code, so to speak. We did a little bit of a graving on the suspension here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just a little bit. So when you run over a guy, he can go, wow. <laughs> this goes over the guy's nose. Wow, look at the engraving on that. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. But I chrome the rotors, the calipers, they're all vented, slotted. And of course, you got all your aero equipped lines up there. Yep. Well, it's just a beautiful job, Brandon. It really is something. Thank you, Jay. It really is amazing. My teacher would say, if Brandon did as much time on his homework as he does working on his car, he would be an A student. Nice idea. Well, it's probably time to take it for a ride. Yeah, let's, let's do see, it. Let's see if it rides as good as it looks. Cruises nicely. You can feel like 409 has got all kinds of power. It does. You don't really need any more than the four speed. No. It dynoed at 466 foot pounds. Yeah. Which, you know, it's pretty good. And you don't want to be going too fast on these tires. Yeah. <laughs> you put your foot down once in this thing, you shred those tires like nothing. <laughs> I see how this can be fun. You got about 10 or 15 cars just go cruising somewhere. You pull in, everybody comes over. It's kind of fun. Well, that's what it's about. And you know, like, yeah, like say we get 15, 20 guys, yeah. you know, and all the cars look like this, like a big bag of Skittles. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we're all in a line. Big lineup. bag of Skittles. I never heard that to them. Yeah. Now well, the whole world's going to know that Jay Leno has a low rider. That's right, Jay Leno, low rider. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Well, you know, even if you're not into low riding, when something is done well, you can't help but appreciate it, even if it's not your own thing. Yeah. You know, like when you look at the engineering on this car and how the fittings, nothing weeps, everything's beautifully done, nicely detailed, all the artwork, you cannot not like it, you know? It just, it's just, because it's just so well done. You know, craftsmanship has its own beauty. And even if something isn't your color, like a lot of people might think this is garish, it's really not because it's beautifully integrated. Like I say, the orange tail light. I mean, there's a theme to it. It's not to me. Garish is when you just throw crap all over the place. Yeah. You know, this makes a statement, and it has its own unique look, and it's just so well done. It's still soft. Yeah, that you can't help but appreciate it. Same thing with handmade knives. I don't. I'm not a knife guy. I don't carry a knife. 
but I have a couple of friends that are knife makers and they make these beautiful blades. You just want to own them because they're artwork. Yeah. And you know, and this is that same kind of deal. Craftsmanship. Yeah. Mine are slower than his. He's running yeah. high pressure pumps off the right. tailgate of these trucks. Hey guys! I'm the low rider, Jay! <laughs> Limitless positions, or you have a couple of positions you go to? Oh, uh, it's wherever I stop the pump. All oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah. Cool, where do I kill it? There you go. Hey, I want to thank the boys, Joe. Joe, thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Jay. Jay, of course, thank you. Chris back there in the six, in the '66. This is a lot of fun. I learned a lot about lowriders today. I hope you learned something too. You know, it's not all just paint and wheels. I mean, it's a lot of well thought out engineering here and it's uniquely Los Angeles art form that's spreading around the world. You know, the French have their way of doing stuff and the Italians have their way of doing stuff. And folks in Los Angeles obviously have their own way of doing stuff too. So it's, it's cool to see this, uh, this spreading and they're fun cars and they're colorful and they're exciting. And uh, I see the, the folks are pretty good too. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.